Excuse me. Never mind, I'll take care of him. Ah, oh, good morning, Mr. Chase. Good morning, Mr. Foster. We need 500 invitations, and we have to have them in the mail by tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Reception for the President of France. Well, the White House hasn't announced it yet, so please keep it confidential. Oh, naturally. Uh, will you let Mr. Chase have 500 envelopes, the number 10 stock? We'll get right to work on it. Thank you. How busy are you, Johnny? Huh? Just starting on the Pan American Banquet. Oh, this is more urgent. State Department, rush. Better order some more of that number 10 stock. White House will want a dinner, I'm sure, then the embassy and oh, Mrs. Rice, of course. Oh, all those parties. It's a wonder anything gets done in Washington. Or does it? <laughs> rush, rush, rush. Why is everybody in such a hurry in this city? Because nearly everyone, from the president on down, He's only here temporarily. <laughs> I'll accept you, Johnny. How long is it now you work for Forrestus? Oh. oh, I made my first engraving here for Woodrow Wilson's second inaugural ball. That was 36 years ago. If I know half as much about a government like you, Johnny, I pass one, two, three my examination for citizenship. <laughs> You'll do all right, Leo. Judge Blaine's cocktail party, a proof copy. Okay, time to run off the rest of them. Magnolia. Yes, sir. Hey, wait a minute. That's just around the corner. <laughs> it's a small world, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Good evening, 
Admiral. Good to see you, sir. Good evening, Slocum. Big crowd tonight. Now that you've arrived, sir, everybody's here. Oh, oh. There we are. That's Thank what we do. Thank you very much. May I sit here, please? Thank you. Thank you. Ah. Enjoying yourself, Admiral? Oh, hello, Steve. Haven't seen you around lately. I just got back from Florida. Oh, Washington makes a man pretty jumpy. So does that stuff. You should drink milk. I can't afford to in my racket. Did you ever hear of anyone ever being influenced over a glass of milk? <laughs> it's no business of mine, but why bother at all? Eh? A man has to make a living. The government hasn't gotten around to pensioning lobbyists. <laughs> Speaking of pensions, how much does a retired admiral pull down a year? Why do you ask? Well, I was just thinking that uh, we could use a man like you in our office. With all the friends that you have, you could pull down some juicy fees on the side. Oh, thank you, Steve. I'd rather keep my friends. Oh, we'd want you to, Is John. Is Guy Benner trying to corrupt you, Admiral? Oh, Mr. Patterson. Oh, Patterson, thanks a lot for that plug you gave me on your last broadcast. What plug? I said you were a pernicious influence around Washington. Well, that kind of reputation is good for business. It uh, makes people think I have more pull than I really do. Well, if I said anything to help you, I apologize. Nice chap. He called you a pernicious influence, and you're proud of it. I can't figure you out, Steve. I've never been able to figure you out either, Admiral. You have no angles, no axe to grind. Not even my nephew who wants a job as a tax collector. There must be something you're after. Well, as a matter of fact, there is. But I'm afraid you can't help me in the matter. No, no, don't underrate me, Johnny. Just ask me. Well, do you know where I can pick up a good second-hand refrigerator? Cheap. <laughs> You're kidding, John. Well, I told you you couldn't help me. <laughs> well, the second-hand merchandise isn't quite my line, but if I run into anything, I'll let you know. Thank you, Steve. Thank ah, you. there you are, Admiral. Oh, Mrs. Rice, lovely party. Thank you, Admiral. You know everyone in Washington. Now, who is that girl over there? Well, I meet so many people, you know. Don't tell me you don't know your own guest, Ella. Well, there's such a big turnover in Washington. What with elections and investigations. I, I don't know any... Madam. Yes, I checked with the men at the door. They think she may be a gate crasher. <laughs> oh. I'll see if I can find out. You all right, Ella? Oh, I'm yes, so Mr. sorry, James. Go and get him a glass and no, water, no, no, no. please. I have this, thank you. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Angela. You've changed your hair again. Well, hello. Pretend that you're with me and you'll be okay. Beg your pardon? You've been spotted. They know that you uh, crashed the party. Well, I'm sure my escort will find that very amusing. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello there. It's so nice to see you again. Oh, uh, the good evening. Please, don't give me away. Is there some place I can talk to you alone? Sure. Out there on the terrace. You see, I'm here without an invitation. No. Oh, dear. But I had to do it. I was getting desperate. Oh, come now. It can't be as serious as all that. Oh, Johnny, excuse me. We want you to settle an argument. Yes, who scored the winning touchdown in the Army-Navy game in 1919? 1919. Nobody did. Navy won six to nothing on a pair of field goals kicked by Charlie King. There you see. Thanks, Johnny. Oh, it's all there. Good night. Best informed man ever to come out of Annapolis. Are you anybody? Huh? Important, I mean. Oh, no. People are just used to seeing me around. My name's Johnny Edwards. Well, how do you do? I'm Ann Richards. I represent the SPCC. SPCC? Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to, uh, to, uh... Society for the Preservation of the California Condor. Oh, well, if it's not too expensive, I'll be glad to join. Well, thank you, but that's not what I'm here for. Do you know Mr. Chandler of the Department of the Interior? I've met him here and there. Oh, I spent a whole week trying to see him. I was in his outer office when I heard his secretary accept an invitation to this party. So I figured that well, if I'm afraid I... you won't meet him here. I happen to know he's changed his plans, gone away for the weekend. Oh. But I've simply got to see him. 
It's a matter of life and death. To you? No. To the California condor. Condor? That's some kind of a bird, isn't it? It's the biggest, rarest, noblest bird in the country. There are only 60 of them left. Well, why would anybody want to hurt them? Because somebody discovered natural gas on their nesting grounds. Oh, oh that's too bad. I like birds myself. Well, most people think it's silly to get worked up over a handful of birds. <laughs> but if we're really serious about conserving our natural resources... Shall we go inside? Hmm? Yeah, all right. Yeah. I'd feel a little safer if we were dancing. Do you mind? Well, it's been a long, long time, but if you're willing to risk it, I'd love to. Such a relief to meet someone like you. After all, those cold, heartless bureaucrats who wouldn't lift a finger to help anybody. Now, just what are you planning to do? I don't know. I can't stay in Washington much longer. All I could get was a suite at the Maryland. My money's running out. Well, Mr. Chandler should be back on Monday. That still doesn't mean that I can get in to see him. Of course, if someone like you were to call and arrange an appointment for me... Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't do that. But you said you knew him. I don't believe in imposing on people I meet socially. Oh, neither do I. But I tried going through channels, and it hasn't done any good. Well, why don't you see your congressman? Well, he's back home campaigning for re-election. Well, I wish I could help you, but I can't. Really, I can't. Well, I guess I was wrong about you. You're just like all the others. May I cut in? By all means, good night. Oh, you can't leave before the highest ranking guest goes home. She hasn't been in Washington long enough to learn the ground rules. Johnny, hmm? you've been holding out on me. Why didn't you introduce me to her? Oh, you don't know me, Steve. I'm like everybody else in Washington. A cold, heartless bureaucrat who wouldn't lift a finger to help anyone. Miss Richards? Yes? This is Johnny Adams. Adams? Yes. We met at Mrs. Rice's party. Oh, yes, of course. Have you changed your mind? Now, just a minute, young lady. I didn't say I was going to help you, but I think I know somebody who can. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, girls. Well, 15, you're early today. Mm -hmm. Any messages? Yes. The man from procurement called twice. Trans Pacific Airlines wants to know what happened to their airmail contract. The CRA deal is okay, and Mr. Duncan would like you to step into his office. Mm. And they say that lobbying is a parasitic occupation. Uh -uh. Oh, Steve. Uh, Steve, you know Mr. Lund of Northern Electric. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Uh, Mr. Lund is interested in the new AEC construction program. What does your firm sell, Mr. Lund? Anything electric, from generators to refrigerators. Okay, you'll find the specifications in the morning mail. Well, now, that's the way I like to do business. <laughs> Anything you want done in Washington, Steve's the man to see. Did you say you make refrigerators? Best on the market. How about letting me have a sample? A friend of mine could use one. Why, only one? You can have a dozen, if you make sure they get in the hands of the right people. That's the only kind I know. <laughs> Just phone the names and addresses into our local office. They'll deliver. Thanks. Mac, come in, please. Right. We have a dozen refrigerators to give away. Use your own judgment. I'll check the list for home-loving types. Save one for a friend of mine, Admiral John Adams, retired. Oh. What's the matter? There's a Johnny Adams here to see you. I didn't know he was anyone special. Send him right in. Yes, sir. Won't you come in, please? Hello, Johnny. This is Steve Bennett, Ann Richards. I believe you've met. We have. Well, I'm willing to forget it if you are. Won't you sit down? Hey. What can I do for you, Johnny? Well, it's not for me. It's for Miss Richards. She'd like an appointment with Mr. Chandler in Interior. Well, that should be simple enough. Do you mind telling me what it's about? I'm trying to save the California condor from extermination. That's a bird. Oh, yes. Very noble cause. 
Well, right now, their breeding and nesting grounds are being protected by the government. But there's a bill in Congress to allow drilling for natural gas in the area. And condors cannot reproduce under such conditions. Well, I don't blame them. <laughs> it's a piece of legislation designed to benefit one special interest, the Continental Gas Company. Now, if they weren't so greedy, they could lay a pipeline and tap that gas field without destroying the sanctuary. Well, uh, something should be done about that. Uh, Mac, uh, get Mr. Chandler in the interior. Yes. Uh, just what is uh, your interest in this deal? I was sent to Washington by the SPCC. The SPCC? Yes. Uh, you don't say. It's a very fine organization. Uh, that means a society for the preservation of the California condo. Of course, everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Chandler. Uh, this is Steve Bennett of Duncan Caldwell and Better. Skip the commercial. Listen, Chandler, what are you guys doing about that bill to massacre the California condors? What are we doing about it? You must have your wires crossed. Look, I know what I'm talking about. I understand it's nothing but a land grab by the Continental Gas Company. You should know, Bennett. Continental Gas is your client. What? Your partners have been chasing around town like a couple of bird dogs pushing this bill. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're on your toes. How's Laura and the kids? Now listen, Bennett. If you're trying to impress someone in your office, I'm going to hang up. Yeah, you, uh, you do that. Uh, the sooner the better. Well, uh, this will require quick action. So if you'll uh, excuse me a minute. Dynamic, isn't he? Uh -huh. One phone call and he accomplishes more than I've been able to do in a whole week. Since when are we handling continental gas? Uh, Bill Caldwell got the account while you were in Florida. Now that he's in Florida, it's your baby. Oh, that's great. I meant to speak to you about it. Something wrong? Give me a quick fill-in on the deal. They're exploring a new field in the California mountains when the government set aside 10,000 acres for some silly birds. So we're backing a bill to allow anyone who'd sunk test wells in the area to continue drilling. So you better get in and pitch. What sort of law does Mr. Bennett practice? Oh, he does a little bit of everything. Gets contracts for his clients, influences legislation. You mean he's a lobbyist? Find your way through all the red tape in Washington. One needs a professional guide. I'm afraid this is going to be a little tougher than I thought. There's some powerful interest behind this bill. Yes, I found that out. We'll have to lay out a campaign. How about doing it over lunch? Why don't you two go ahead? I have to be somewhere at one o'clock sharp. Well, there's something we have to get straight. I can't afford to pay you any fees. Oh, I'm sure that we can reach a friendly understanding. Which way are you going, Johnny? I'll drop you off. Oh, the um, corner of 19th and Constitution will be fine. Navy Department, eh? If, uh, no, 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 no. Don't tell me what you're doing. I don't want to know any military secrets. You see, condors lay only one egg every two or three years. Now, if there's the slightest disturbance in this area, they abandon their nest, leaving the egg unhatched and their young to starve. Imagine that. And I feel sure that if I can make these points to Mr. Chandler... Well, uh, this is a very delicate situation, and it has to be handled with great tact. That's why the Admiral brought you to me. The Admiral? Johnny Adams. He's retired, of course. He never mentioned it. Well, Johnny's very modest about his accomplishments. For that matter, so am I. I think it's only fair to tell you I don't exactly approve of your profession. What do you have against lawyers? Nothing. But I don't care for lobbyists. And what are you doing here if not lobbying? It's quite different. Oh, of course it is. A lobbyist is someone who disagrees with you. Anyone who agrees with your views is a patriotic citizen. I fight for what I believe in. You only do it for money. Money happens to be what I believe in. Oh, so you're willing to take either side of a question, depending upon who pays you more, huh? No, no, no. I have a few convictions of my own. I'm against slavery, witch burning, cannibalism, head hunting. And I'm against all this influence peddling in government by crony. Some more coffee? Coffee. No, thanks. No, thanks. Everyone likes to do favors for friends. My business is to introduce friends to friends. Mm -hmm. That's just the kind of thing that gives Washington a bad name. Look, those methods weren't invented in Washington. That's part of human nature. When a, a baby gives out his first yell, He's lobbying for something. When a woman puts on a low-cut gown and douses herself in perfume, she's lobbying too. 
When a man sends a girl flowers or, or takes her to lunch. I can always pay my own check. <laughs> you take things too seriously. With my know-how and your moral indignation, we could accomplish quite a lot. We're not accomplishing anything now. Why do you think I brought you here? Excuse me while I go peddle my influence. How are you, Russ? How's Ella? Fine, thanks, Steve. Good. JC? Hi, Bennett. Uh, Hi, Jim. Oh, Steve. Look, I have somebody who'd like to talk to you about a bill in Congress. If it was already up on the hill, it's out of my hands. You know that. Yes, I know, but uh, it would impress this girl if you would talk to her for a few minutes. Well, bring her over. It would impress her more if we could come to your office. Okay, four o'clock. Thanks, Jim. It's all set. We're seeing greedy in agriculture at four o'clock. But I wanted to see Mr. Chandler in interior. Well, it's uh, like this. Both departments have authority over public lands, and they're very jealous of each other. So to get action from interior, you set a fire under agriculture. I don't understand, Washington. I don't understand a telephone, but it works. Well, thank you for lunch. Look, we have a couple of hours to kill. What do we do? Well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to the Smithsonian. I'll go with you. It's my favorite spot in Washington. I bet you've never even been there. That's why it's my favorite spot. Teddy Roosevelt counted over 90 varieties of birds around the White House. I've seen some pretty strange birds around there myself. Hey, look. This is the passenger pigeon. A century ago, there were millions of them. Now they're extinct. And where's the Carolina parakeet? The heath hen? The great auk, huh? Well, right now, the same fate threatens the California condor. How did you get into this bird racket, anyway? Why must everything be a racket? Sorry, it must be my upbringing. Did you have an underprivileged childhood? I'm still underprivileged. You're looking at a very rare specimen, a native of Washington, D.C., a man who doesn't have the right to vote. Now, there's something you ought to be lobbying for. My father spent years fighting for self-government for the District of Columbia. What interest did he represent? The voters of the 2nd Congressional District of Iowa. Your father was in Congress? I served eight terms. After he retired, he opened a law office here in Washington. This is what I came here to see. Mockingbird. Mimus polyglottus Richard's eye. Richard's eye. Richard's. Not named after you. Uh-huh. Well, did you discover it? It's not considered ethical to name a bird after yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm new at this bird business. This subspecies was classified by Professor Hendricks, who worked with my father. Oh, where? The Department of Zoology at Stanford. That's my racket, too. Are you enjoying the exhibit? Oh, yes, thank you. That's good. You know, we don't get many young people here nowadays. <laughs> I'm Dr. Bigelow. How do you How do? You, do? Do? you may not realize it, Dr. Bigelow, but you have a celebrity here. This is Miss Richards. That bird was named after her. Really? Well, this is a big day for me. I have another famous visitor here, Mr. T. Courtney Lemmer, one of the outstanding authorities on bird calls in the United States. Well, I, I wouldn't go quite that far, just east of the Mississippi. <laughs> Mr. Lemmer has just been recording some rare calls for our archives. Oh, I'd like to hear them sometime. My specialty is the European bullfinch. Lasts 23 seconds. Y you don't say. Oh, can you do Mimus polyglottus Richard's eye? The mockingbird? Why, certainly. What an amazing family resemblance. Now, here's a mockingbird imitating a cedar waxwing. <laughs> Don, I always go off at that point. Oh, is something wrong? That was the real cedar wax wing. It was? There's a very subtle difference, you know. Uh-huh. Try the test on them. Now, see if you can tell me which is the true song of the bobolink and which is the imitation. <whistles> or... Would you mind repeating that, please?
This is all very pleasant, but uh, we may miss our appointment. Now, let's... Bob Link was first the second time and second the first time. Well done. <laughs> yeah, if you like, I'll send you one of my records. Oh, please do. Would yes. you? I'm staying at the Maryland. So am I. Maybe we can get together and try a few duets. Oh, I'd love to. Oh, well, goodbye, Miss <laughs> Ritter. It's been a real pleasure. <laughs> The mating call of the Potomac Night Owl. Are you sure that you're uh, used to this stuff, Professor? No, but I'd like to be. You know, I think I'd uh, better take you home. Well, if you want to know what I think. Oh, I think I'd like to dance. Whatever you say, Professor. First impression came from. What impression? That you were a complete heel. Oh, thanks uh, for changing your mind. I still don't understand why you're helping me. It's not as if you're interested in birds. Let's uh, drop the birds for a while. Sorry. <laughs> it's my Puritan ancestors. I always feel guilty when I'm having a good time. <laughs> I always feel guilty when I'm not. <laughs> How do you feel now? Oh, very guilty. <laughs> It's been a very pleasant evening. Yes, and very, uh, instructive. Oh, your education's barely started. Would you like to come up for a while? Well, I... Don't you want to? Well, sure. Park my car, please. Here. So long as it's costing me a small fortune, I might as well get some use out of it. Make yourself comfortable. Not there. The couch. I'll be right with you. Turn out the lights, please. Mm -hmm. from 20 to 30 pounds and lives from 60 to 100 years. Is this what you brought me up here for? 
Well, I want you to believe in what we're fighting for, and to do that, you have to know something about the subject. Yeah, the subject. The Condor is a magnificent flyer. He climbs to a height of 15,000 feet, soaring majestically above the mountain peaks and gliding for half an hour without flapping his wings. This is the baby Condor, the heir apparent. He has just burst forth from his shell. Hello? Hello, Ed. Oh, good morning, Admiral. Has Steve been able to do anything for you? Not yet. But he's devoting a lot of time to it. I think Steve likes you. Only because I'm a girl. Well, what better reason? I was wondering if you'd like to go to a party tonight. Oh, thank you, Admiral. But Steve's taking me to a reception at the Mayflower. There's some people he wants me to meet. Well, that's just what I was planning to take you. Well, why don't you come by here first, and, and we can all go together. Steve's picking me up at 7 o'clock. That'll be fine. Bye. Bye. This was left at the desk for you. Oh? Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. news from Washington, Capitol Hill. The Senate Committee on Lobbying is quietly gathering material for a full-dress investigation. Tip to Senator O'Malley. Why don't you look into the activities of Steve Bennett, one of our better-known pressure boys? He's now distributing free refrigerators around town, and you might find out what he expects to get in return. Among the bigger clients represented by Mr. Bennett's law firm are Northern Electric, Continental Gas, and Trans-Pacific Airlines. Exclusive. Here's the lowdown on the Army's... Republic 1154. Hello, is this the residence of Admiral John Adams? No, it isn't. I'm sorry, I guess it's the wrong one. But this is ridiculous. Why, he's one of the most prominent men in Washington. I'm sorry, miss. Our records list only one retired admiral named John Adams, and he's living in Honolulu. Well, maybe his middle name's John. Oh, now, surely you can find an Admiral Adams who won the Navy Cross. That seems to be the trouble. This is the second inquiry I've had today about the address of an Admiral Adams, probable first name John, retired. Oh, Johnny Adams? Do you know him? Well, certainly. He's always one of the first to contribute to Navy relief. Miss Ames, you better check your records again. Yes, sir. As soon as we've made a thorough search of our files, we'll notify you. Well, how long will that take? About two weeks. Well, never mind. I'm seeing him tonight. Oh, good. Well, then you can let us know his address. Charlie! Steve! Paul, please. Are you trying to beat my time, Admiral? Seems to be the other way around. You know, you're the hardest man in all of Washington to find. Where do you hide out? Why? Were you looking for me? My secretary tried the Navy Department, the Coast Guard, the Veterans Administration. Why all the fuss? I got that refrigerator for you. Oh, 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 that's very kind of you. The old one just conked out completely. Four. There it is. Where do you want me to send it? Hmm? Oh, the refrigerator. How much is it? Maybe I can't afford it. Ah, forget it, Johnny. It didn't cost me anything. Well, I don't know. It's sort of a rule with me not to accept gifts. Don't worry. There's no strings attached. What's the address? Well, it's not for me. It's for a lady I know. Oh, I see. Oh, no, 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 nothing like that. No, she's the widow of a southern congressman. <laughs> well, that's quite an accomplishment, surviving a southern congressman. What's her name? Mrs. Chadwick, 742 Hampton Place, Northwest. She did say 7 o'clock. 
Hmm? Yeah. Maybe she left a message at the desk. Look, Steve, about that refrigerator. I'm not at all sure that I want to take it. You didn't by any chance listen to Roy Patterson this morning, did you? No. Why? I was just wondering. I understand he took another poke at me. Hi. Where you been? Making train reservations for California, if you must know. Hello, Admiral. Something the matter? Have Mr. Bennett tell you how he's been representing the Continental Gas Company all this time. Is that true? Listen, Ann, when I offered to help you, I had no idea they were one of our clients. He's just been leading me around in circles to protect their interests. I don't care if the bill passes or not. Well, I know you're the man who doesn't care about anything, just so long as you collect your fee. I would have told you before, but I didn't think you'd understand. And you were absolutely right. Goodbye, Admiral, and thanks for everything. Well, I think you may be doing Stephen injustice. Admiral, you're a very nice man, but you've let this lobbyist take you for a ride, just like he's taken me. Well, I'm getting out of this Washington rat race. Ann, listen. Ann, will you open this door and let me explain? Ann, this is ridiculous. If you only let me explain. Where's that going? Mrs. Chadwick. I'm afraid there's been a mistake. I must ask you to take it back. Are you Mr. Chadwick? No, but I got it for her, and I changed my mind. Oh, you better take it up with the company, mister. Yes, but I have to get to work. Why can't you just load it back on the truck? Look, Grandpa, we got a lot of deliveries to oh, make. but I appreciate you. Is that for me? Mrs. Chadwick? Yes. Where do you want it? Well, around to the side door. Mr. Adams, you did this. Well, it's very difficult to explain, Mrs. Chadwick, but the fact is... I could it... kiss you. You'll never know what this means to me. Or to me. Some of you may have heard Roy Patterson yesterday challenging this committee to track down the people who have been receiving free refrigerators from a certain lobbyist. Mm, that's right. Well, I'm glad to say that our investigators have secured a complete list from the firm making the deliveries. Well, that's good. That's splendid. I, uh... <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, this is too grave a matter to be handled in the routine way. Now, I suggest we exercise the utmost discretion until everyone concerned has been subpoenaed. Then we blow the lid off and go straight on television. Good idea, Senator. Come Very good idea. Senator. What are you reading, Leo? The Constitution, what else? Day and night, I'm reading it for my examination. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing I'd like you to explain to me. Here, the first article of the Bill of Rights, it says, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for... Uh, uh, redress. Re redress of... of re uh, their grievances. Redress their grievances. Redre uh, what, what means it, re redress? <laughs> of, uh, it means if you don't like the way the government's running things, you have the right to demand a change. Every citizen can do this? Sure. You can write to the president. You can see your congressman. You can testify at a committee hearing. You can... Yes. Even if the idea is not so hot, a person has a right to be heard. Nothing should be allowed to stop her. Her? Who is her? Yeah. Oh, I was just thinking out loud. Keep an eye on my lunch. Where are you going? If I'm not there by one, you tell Mr. Foster that I'm out exercising my constitutional rights. Come in. My bags will be ready in a second. So you're really leaving? Hello, Admiral. Yes, I'm leaving. Oh, that's too bad, because I came here to offer you my help. I didn't know you felt that strongly about saving the condors. I don't care if it's condors or free milk for Hottentots. You deserve a chance to present your case, and you didn't get a square deal. Thanks to your friend, Mr. Bennett. Oh, Steve's not such a bad chap, really. 
I was beginning to think so, too. Until this happened, that's what hurts. Well, I feel responsible for the whole thing, and I'd like to make it up to you. Well, thanks, Admiral, but I don't think I can get anywhere. Even with your help. Well, don't forget I've been around Washington a long time. I know where a lot of skeletons are hidden. Wouldn't that be stooping to the same tactics as the opposition? When the other side opens up with a 16-inch gun, you don't fight back with a pea shooter. Come in. Take your bags, ma'am. Some other time. Yes, ma'am. Let's unpack that 16-inch gun. Good! Now, tell me just one thing. What good are these, uh, these birds doing? Well, what good is the Washington Monument doing? But you wouldn't suggest tearing it down, would you? You know, Congressman, the Department of Defense is very anxious to find out who leaked that information about the guided missile program to Roy Patterson. Oh, well, uh, 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 that's so? Mm -hmm. uh, some of my uh, colleagues on the Military Affairs Committee are, uh, well, are very careless. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, uh, on, uh, on second thought, I can see that there's a lot of justice in your argument. <laughs> uh, yes. Mm. <laughs> this bill will allow drilling in their sanctuary. Condors? But aren't they birds of prey? Ah, but so is the bald eagle, our national bird. Yes. <laughs> well, now, no one has ever accused me of being unpatriotic. In fact, I was the first man in the house to speak out against the Japanese beetle. I remember. Do you realize how many bird lovers there are in this country? Well, I think my record will show that I've always gone straight down the line for our feathered friends. Tell me, how did you enjoy your trip to Hawaii, Congressman? Oh, it wasn't a pleasure cruise, Admiral. We were there on official business. Oh. I understand your committee originally planned an inspection trip to Alaska until your wife decided it would be too cold up there. That, sir, is a base canard. Who told you? Someone who's interested in the defeat of Section 3A of H.R. 2716. Well, uh, I haven't studied the bill very carefully, but I'm sure that I'm against it, too. Down three, doubled and vulnerable. Well, according to my figures, we've lined up almost 60 votes against the bill. Well, that's not enough. But well, we still have another week before he comes up in the house. I wish I could spend more time on it, instead of just evenings and during my lunch hour. I don't mean to pry, Admiral, but what do you do the rest of the day? I mean, if you're retired. Uh, well, uh, here comes Congresswoman Bates. Good afternoon, Mrs. Bates. I know, Admiral. It's about the condors. Well, you've got my vote. Oh, thank you. Uh, furthermore, you can count on three of my colleagues from... Isn't, isn't that a swallow-tailed kite? I never heard one this far north before. Just practicing. Who do we tackle next? Hmm? Well, let me see. It must be... Oh, there's Congressman Farrow. But the only subject he's interested in is cotton. Well, I could point out that birds eat more ball weevils than anybody else. You could? Come on. That's all right, Steve. Always glad to return a favor. Thanks a lot, Roy. Bye. I'm afraid we've just lost a vote. Admiral. Hello. Thought you said that stuff makes you jumpy. Oh, camouflage. I've been meaning to call you. How's the refrigerator working? Fine. Are you one of the people that got a refrigerator? No, no one can accuse me of trying to influence the Admiral. After all, we're on opposite sides of the fence. Let's keep it that way. Yes, ma'am. I understand you two are doing a bit of lobbying. I'm oh, just using a few underhand tricks we picked up from you. <clears throat> well, buttonholing uh, congressman is OK, but it's not enough. You've got to build up outside pressure. Now, there's nothing that touches a congressman's heart like a few thousand letters from home signed by registered voters. Yeah, but we haven't got your organization. Or expense account. Or oh, your job's a cinch compared to mine. It's much easier to arouse public sympathy for a bunch of poor homeless vultures than for a big corporation. All this invaluable advice and free of charge. 
Why? Well, I hate to see this business wrecked by amateurs. Now, if I were handling your campaign, the first thing I would do is... Steve, here's someone who's just dying to meet you. Are you Steve Bennett? That's right. Got a little present for you. A subpoena to appear before the Senate Committee on Lobbying. Thanks. You celebrating my own makeup, kid? Let's see you lobby your way out of this, Mr. Bennett. Why, you took advantage of me. Where's the telephone in this house? I'm going to call the FBI. I put one over on you, didn't I? Yeah, very clever. How would you like to help me pull the same stunt on somebody else? Ooh. Admiral John Adams retired. Oh, Johnny Adams? Yeah, that's oh, right. Uh, he's in Europe, UN conference. Oh. Be seeing you, Steve. All right, uh, General. There goes one of the finest generals in the United States Army. Oh? Look, if you take that kind of an approach, what can you expect? Hi, Mac. Oh, Mr. Duncan wants to see you right away. What's on the fire? You are. If you fellas can't control the situation, why are you taking our money? Well, uh, Bennett's been handling it, and as far as I know, it... oh, here he is. Uh, Steve, this is Mr. Taylor, Vice President of Continental Gas. Welcome to Washington. What's going on here, Bennett? I thought you had this drilling bill sewed up. Well, you never know until all the votes are counted. We've been getting some very disturbing reports in New York. Who's Admiral Adams? He's one of our more solid citizens. Why? My sources in Congress inform me that he's lined up a dangerous number of votes against us. If you don't mind a suggestion, why don't you drop this bill? Drop it? Are you insane? I've been investigating this California project. And there's no reason why this gas field can't be tapped by lateral drilling from outside the sanctuary. There are lots of reasons. Two million of them. Dollars. That's why we cooked up this bill in the first place. Our annual stockholders meeting is next week, and I want to be able to announce that we won't have to spend that extra money. Well, I can't guarantee anything. The Admiral pulls a lot of weight around here. Then it's up to you to stop him. He must have his price. You don't know Johnny. Then get something on him. Anybody as honest as that must have something to hide. Take my word for it, Mr. Taylor. You're on the wrong track. And personally, I don't want any part of it. It's the same old story. If you want anything done, you've got to do it yourself. Where can I find this fellow Adam? Uh, Mac will know. Got a tucked in waist, a bouffant skirt, a nylon blue. Oh, well, Mac, uh, where does Admiral Adams live? Oh, let's not start on that again. After what I went through trying to get a refrigerator to him. Was he in on that refrigerator deal? Oh, it wasn't for himself. It was for some woman he knew. I can give you her address. Ah, uh, lady friend, eh? Now we're getting someplace where there's smoke, there's fire. Hmm. There isn't even a spark. He's at least 70. Well, you never can tell about sailors. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Chadry. I've been waiting up for you. Well, yes. you're all dressed up. <laughs> we, we had a little party at my lodge. Oh. While you were out, there was a man here asking questions about you. What kind of questions? Oh, about you and me. He was very suspicious, seemed to think there was something between us, especially when he found out you lived here. Oh, well, I'm flattered, of course, but I hope you set him straight. Oh, it wasn't necessary. Ah. Turned out to be a case of mistaken identity. How do you mean? Well, the man he was looking for is a retired admiral. And I told him you couldn't be because you've been working for Foster and Son for over 30 years. You told him that? Did I do something wrong? No, not at all. Good night, Mrs. Chadwick. Good morning. Could you tell me if Johnny Adams lives here? I'm not answering any more questions. Who are you? Hello, Johnny. Oh, Steve. Johnny, uh, I want to talk to you. Well, I have to meet someone in Lafayette Park. I'll drive you over. Get in the car. Thank you. It's not the same lot. What's the story, Johnny? Are you an admiral, or aren't you? So you know the whole thing? You don't deny it? 
I suppose that was one of your men that came around yesterday. Of course not. That was Taylor, vice president of the Continental Gas Company. Vice president? Oh, dear. Well, I guess this just confirms your low opinion of human nature. You know me, Johnny. As far as I'm concerned, you'll always be an institution around here. But it's like being told that the Declaration of Independence wasn't really signed on the 4th of July. Well, as a matter of fact, it wasn't. What? No, the actual date was August the 2nd, 1776. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Johnny, you're in a tough spot. What are you planning to do with your information? Well, I'm not planning to do anything, but Taylor is. If you don't stop campaigning against this bill, he'll blow the lid off the whole story. Oh, I was expecting that. You know what this means to you, don't you, Johnny? You'll lose your job, your fair weather friends, everything that you built up for the past 30 years. But if you lay off, why? You can go on playing Admiral, be welcome at all the best parties in Washington for the rest of your life. You make it sound very tempting. You know that everything I said is for your own good. After all, the first law of nature is self-preservation. Yes, I know. Every man for himself. Good morning, Admiral. Oh. Seems we can't escape each other. What's he trying to put over on you now? Well... How can a girl who looks so sweet and wholesome have such a low, suspicious mind? Well, thanks for the lift, Steve. Remember what I told you, Johnny. Don't do anything foolish. What do you mean by that? Oh, well, nothing very important. Well, where do we start today? The old house office building or the new house office building? Well, I think we've done about all we can. There isn't much point in going on with it. We can't quit now when we've got a chance to win. But they won't let you win, Hen. The people behind this bill have got too much at stake. They'll go to any lengths to stop us. Does this have something to do with Steve? No. No, I started thinking about it last night, and I... I decided you were right. If we use the same methods as our opponents, we are no better than they are. Well, I decided that I was wrong. Politics is too important to be left to the politicians. It's all right to feel that way when you're very young, Anne. But I'm an old man now, and I just want to spend the rest of my days in peace and quiet. Let somebody else do the fighting. When I was discouraged and ready to go home, you talked me out of it. Well, I can't let you give up now. I'm no hero, Ed. The man who won a Navy Cross didn't quit under fire. Johnny! I called your house, and the landlady told me you are here. Oh, they are. Johnny! You don't forget what Daddy says. No, 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 of course not. Uh, uh, Miss Richards, Mr. Leo Fisher. How do you do? How do you do? Today I'll become an American citizen. Oh, that's wonderful. I promised Leo to go to the court with him, so if you don't mind, I'll... Maybe you would like to come along, no? No, Miss Richards wouldn't like yes, that. Yes, I would, of course. I'd love to. All right, then let's hurry, please. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation. And I take this obligation. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, so help me God. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, so help me God. When you walk out of this courtroom, you will carry with you not only the rights of citizenship, but certain responsibilities as well. This is your country now. You must help keep it free and make it a better place to live in. Self-government is a meaningless phrase unless every citizen takes an active part in public affairs. That is not only your privilege, but your duty. My heartiest congratulations to all of you. Where do you know Leo from? Huh? He's an old messmate of mine. Johnny! Look at me. I'm a citizen <laughs> and a taxpayer. Congratulations. You'd like to come with me for a drink? I'm meeting some of the boys from the shop. You mean the ship? The ship? Yeah. I'll take a rain check on that, Leo. Why don't you go with him? Help him celebrate. What? 
and turn the government over to the pressure boys? Uh -uh. We've got a lot of work to do. Thanks, Admiral. Come on. Bye. So long, Leo. Admiral, rain check, pressure boys. You're going to have to cut some more, Roy. How about the commercial? But Mr. Patterson can't be disturbed. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Nail everything to the floor. Did anyone tip you off on a story about Johnny Adams? Why? I want you to do me a favor. Don't use it. Now look, Bennett, I checked with the Navy Department and Foster and Sons. It's true, all right. So he crashed a few parties and got away with a couple of chicken sandwiches. Is that a crime? But masquerading as an admiral. Well, that's no worse than a politician masquerading as a statesman. Why are you trying to cover up for him? Would you risk everything you had for a bunch of buzzards? That's what the old man did, even after he was warned to lay off. You have to at least admire him for sticking to his principles. 30 seconds. Well, I haven't anything against Johnny personally, but if I don't use the story, somebody else will. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that song before. The second chorus goes, who cares about you as long as I get mine? Look who's talking. You'd barbecue your grandmother on the Capitol steps for a buck. And you'd be right there with your little notebook, taking down her last word. Let's face it, Patterson, we're just a couple of parasites. It's guys like Johnny who make this country a place where you and I can get rich. Stand by. What about? Will you give the old man a break? I'll take care of him. Thanks a lot. The makers of Shinwell's medicated ointment present Roy Patterson and his comments on the news, direct from the nation's capital. And now, Roy Patterson. Good afternoon. Inside Washington, the number one topic of conversation in government circles is the Senate lobbying investigation, which opens tomorrow. Slated to be the first witness before the O'Malley Committee is Steve Bennett, whose recent operations were first exposed by this commentator. In connection with the hearings, the following definition is making the rounds. A lobbyist is a man who follows you through a revolving door and comes out ahead of you. Attention, Mrs. Della Rice, and all you other hostesses in the nation's capital. I have just learned that Johnny Adams, considered one of this city's most distinguished citizens, without whose presence no social function would be complete, is not really a retired admiral, as he claims, but an engraver employed for over 30 years by the firm of Foster and Sons. Now, I have known Johnny Adams for a long time, and I'm sure his deception was entirely harmless. But it proved... Good afternoon. Do you know where I can find Johnny Adams? Mr. Adams is no longer employed here. No? However, if you go back into the print shop, I think you'll find him packing. Oh, thank you. This place won't be the same without you, Johnny. <laughs> it's about time I was retiring anyway. Here she goes. Johnny, I just heard. It's all true. That's why you wanted to quit the other day, wasn't it? Because Steve threatened to expose you. He was just trying to warn me. It's all my fault. I forced you to go on with the campaign against your will. Oh, I've been expecting this for years. It's almost a relief to know that it's over and done with. Why didn't you tell me? It's so long since I've had anyone to confide in. That's what started it, I guess. Printing all those invitations to all sorts of people and... I don't know what came over me, but one day I just slipped a sample into my pocket. It was one of Mrs. Rice's. I rented a tuxedo and walked right in there. It was a real nice party. Yes, and I... I suddenly realized what I'd been missing all these years. Kind of funny in a way. Mm. All those big shots thinking you were a big shot. You know, there's so much confusion in Washington. But if you only seem to know what you're doing, you can get away with anything. But they had no right to fire you just because you borrowed a few invitations. Borrowed? Mr. Foster didn't really fire me. He simply gave me the choice of resigning. But what are you going to do now? Oh, I'll manage. I'm only sorry I messed you up. Maybe. Yeah. I had hoped that this wouldn't get out until after the bill had gone into the house, but... I'm afraid nobody will vote for it now. You might just as well pack up and go back to California. 
I still can come and see you, Johnny. Although this is one of the larger committee rooms in the building, it couldn't begin to hold all the spectators who were trying to crowd in. And uh, here comes our first witness, that authority on how to win friends and influence people, Steve Bennett. It is estimated that an audience of over 20 million will see and hear today's proceedings, both in their homes, in their places of business, and on large screen television. The witness is being sworn in, and the proceedings are about to begin. What is your occupation, Mr. Bennett? I'm a lawyer. Are you engaged in any other business? Yes, I'm a lobbyist. Registered under the Federal Regulation Act of 1946. Is it your practice to distribute gifts to people in high places? Only to those who accept them. <laughs> Earlier this month, did you send out a dozen refrigerators to various individuals in Washington? I did. Would you uh, look at this list and tell me if these are the people who receive refrigerators from you? There you are, ma'am. My train doesn't leave for half an hour. You don't have to wait. Oh, that's all right. I've nothing else to do. Admiral John Adams. First name on this list. What was your purpose in presenting him with the refrigerator? That was purely a friendly gesture. Steve. You did say Shaw. That's right. For Miami. Did you know at that time that he wasn't really an admiral? No. Would it have made any difference to you if you had? No. Isn't it true that your firm has been lobbying for a bill to allow drilling in the California Condor Sanctuary? Yes. And isn't it generally known that this uh, so-called admiral was lobbying against it? Yes. Were you trying to win him over to your side? I didn't think he could be influenced. Besides, the campaign was actually being run by a girl, Ann Richards who is on the payroll of some organization in California. I suppose that's all been taken care of? Yes, it certainly has, ma'am. <laughs> was Mr. Adams being paid for his services? Why don't you ask him? Mr. Bennett, this committee will decide what witnesses it calls and what questions it puts to them. Do you mind if I make a statement, Senator? If it's pertinent. Maybe it's impertinent. But I think you're wasting your time. I'm a registered lobbyist. I file a quarterly statement of my income and expenses, and it's printed in the congressional record for everyone to see. If this investigation is to accomplish anything, it must throw the spotlight of publicity on the undercover lobbyist. The people who operate behind the scenes, who make no financial reports, who are not even suspected of being a lobbyist. Are you referring to Mr. Adams? <coughs> Among others? Well, he's pulled some pretty dirty tricks before, but this tops them all. Oh, excuse Could me. Please, please get through. Thank you very much. Thank you. Has Mr. Adams been duly subpoenaed to appear before this committee? We have issued a subpoena, Mr. Chairman, but it hasn't been served as yet. But while you're at it, I suggest that you also subpoena Miss Richards. She not only worked hand in glove with the admin, but I suspect that she may be planning to leave town. Your ticket? I'm not going anywhere. Come on, Johnny. Good. The committee room is even more crowded today than it was yesterday. I know one prominent Washington hostess who had herself subpoenaed, so she'd be sure to get in. 
There's some activity in the background. It may mean the entrance of one of our principal witnesses. Yes. Here is the star of our real-life drama, the self-made admiral who overnight has become a national figure. Thank you. Will you raise your right hand? Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Will you state your full name, please? John Adams. Mr. Adams, are you now or have you ever been an admiral in the United States Navy? No, sir. For that matter, were you ever in the Navy at all? No, sir. What is your occupation, Mr. Adams? I'm an engraver, currently unemployed. Have you ever engaged in any lobbying activities? Well, I suppose you could call it that. What would you call it? Well, I'm certainly not all those things they said in the papers. Power behind the scenes, sinister influence. Goodness, Senator, you know me better than that. <laughs> Did you hear Steve Bennett's testimony before this committee? Part of it. Are you on friendly terms with Mr. Bennett? Oh, yes. Steve hasn't an enemy in the world, but I like him anyway. Did you ever receive any gifts from Mr. Bennett? Yes, I did. One. What was it? A very nice refrigerator. The sucker? Now they've got him. And talking about refrigerators, be sure to keep yours well stocked with Hammer Schlager's beer. Remember, in beer, it's the water that counts. And Hammer Schlager beer is practically all water. <laughs> what was Mr. Bennett's motive in presenting you with that refrigerator? Oh, it wasn't his idea. I brought it up first. You solicited that gift? More or less. You see, Mrs. Chadwick's old icebox kept breaking down and... Who is Mrs. Chadwick? My landlady. Her husband used to be in Congress. I believe he came from your home state, Senator Beecham. Oh, yes, yes, it's Jackson Lee Chadwick. I knew him well, a true son of the Old South. Mr. Adams, have you ever received a gift from anybody else in Washington? Well, I did accept something from myself. From whom? The young lady I was working with, Miss Richards. What was the nature of the gift? She bought me this tie to wear at the hearing. <laughs> Mr. Adams, isn't it a fact that for years you have been attending parties in Washington without invitations? Oh, I always had an invitation. <laughs> Isn't it true that you called yourself Admiral in order to facilitate your lobbying activities? I didn't call myself Admiral. That's what other people called me, including some of the members of this committee. <clears throat> I'm curious to know just how you acquired that title. Well, it's been such a long time since it started, more or less, as a nickname because of my interest in naval affairs. But after a while, people began to accept it as a fact. Didn't you make any attempt to correct this impression? Oh, yes, I tried at first. But you know how it is in Washington. The more you deny something, the more everybody believes it. <laughs> Mr. Adams, you may have bluffed your way into a lot of drawing rooms, but you can't get away with it here. I say that you have perpetrated a deliberate fraud, even wearing a phony medal to further your deception. You can call me a fake, but not this pin. Are you claiming that it was given to you officially? Yes, sir. And yet you testified you'd never served in the Navy. That's right. Let me remind you, Mr. Adams, you are under oath. I'm aware of that. Then how did you get the Navy Cross? It was presented to me in September 1918 by the Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Franklin D. Roosevelt. For what? 
for bravery over and above the call of duty for my son, able seaman John Adams, Jr. He was awarded the medal posthumously, and I'm proud to wear it for him. I'm sorry, Mr. Adams. I had no idea. Oh, that's all right. The fact is, if it weren't for this decoration, I wouldn't be here now. How do you mean, Adver... Mr. Adams? Well, I was told that if I continued my fight against the natural gas bill, I'd get into trouble. But there's something about wearing this pin that makes it hard to quit and run. How did you get involved in this lobbying campaign in the first place? Well, I think Miss Richards could explain that better than I can. She's right here. The witness is temporarily excused. Will Miss Ann Richards come forward, please? This is your big chance. There are millions of people listening. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. No matter how this turns out, you're going to be a celebrity, and I want to give you the biggest party of the year. We'll invite everybody in Washington who was ever investigated. Will you raise your right hand, please? Will you state your full name, please? Ann Richards. What is your occupation, Miss Richards? I'm an ornithologist. Are you affiliated with any organization? Yes. The Society for the Preservation of the California Condor. What is your interest in this natural gas bill? My only interest is in saving the North American condor from extinction. As a symbol of our vanishing natural resources, the condor represents the biggest challenge to conservation in this country today. Uh, Miss uh, Richards, I bow to no man or woman in my concern for the welfare of American wildlife. But I cannot, for the life of me, understand all this fuss about the condor. What is this bird, anyway? A scavenger, an eater of carrion. Senator. Don't interrupt me, child. The condor is an abomination to the eye. Its habits are deplorable. And as for its morals, well, they do not even bear discussion. Now, if we were talking about the golden crown flycatcher, which incidentally is a native of my home state, I can sympathize with you. But the condor, who has ever experienced beauty gazing at this unsightly buzzard? Has anyone ever thrilled to the magic of his song? If indeed he ever gives voice to anything. <laughs> Situation critical. Imperative that you wire your congressman at once. Let him know where you stand. Signed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now send a copy of that telegram to every organization on this list. Right. Hello? Just a moment, please. It's your Boston call. Hello? Yes, I'll hold on. You better slow down before it gets you. Funny, I never felt better in my life. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Amanda Lowell? Well, this is Steve Bennett calling from Washington. Did you hear Miss Richards' testimony before the O'Malley Committee? Well, as president of the New England Bird Watcher Society, what are you going to do about it? If this bill passes, Mrs. Lowell, not a single bird will be safe in this country. Oh, they'll pick them off one by one, feather by feather. Look, I want every member of your organization to wire Congress immediately. Also send your protest to the Continental Gas Company, New York City. The next order of business before the House is H.R. 2716, the Deficiency Appropriations Bill. The clerk will begin the reading. An act making supplemental appropriations for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 1953, and for other purposes. Section 1, 
Department of Agriculture, subsection A, Forest Service, for an additional amount for forest development, roads, and trails, $2,700,000, to remain available until expended. Section 2, Department of Commerce. Section 3, Department of Interior. Here it comes. Subsection A, Bureau of Land Management, for an additional amount for salaries and expenses, $350,000, provided that no part of this appropriation may be used to enforce any restriction on mineral leases in the California Condor Sanctuary where such leases were operative before the effective date of the order creating the sanctuary. Mr. Speaker, I recognize the gentleman from Tennessee. During the past 24 hours, I, as many of you, have received thousands of communications concerning Section 3, subsection A of this bill. I think one of them will be of particular interest to this body, and I should like to read it at this time. In the interest of conserving our national wildlife, we have arranged to carry on all future drilling operations outside the limits of the California Condor Sanctuary. Signed, Horace Winthrop, Chairman of the Board, Continental Gas Company. Since Continental Gas is the only leaseholder qualifying under Section 3, subsection A, I hereby request unanimous consent to strike this provision from the bill. Are there any objections? There being none, so ordered. <laughs> oh no. We did it. We won. Oh, oh. Congratulations, Admiral. You sure put it over. How about a statement? Oh, I didn't do anything. Mr. Richards deserves all the credit. Oh, don't forget the public. I can't get over the way the public came to our support. <laughs> you don't really think all those telegrams and letters were spontaneous, do you? What do you mean? Hey, Steve, don't go away mad. How does it feel to take a licking? All I can say is the best team won. Yes, but they had a little help. I happen to know that 600 telegrams were sent from your office asking various organizations to fight against the bill. Oh? What's your game, Steve? Yeah, what gives? Yeah, which side are you working for? Now, you boys all know Patterson's reputation for accuracy. There's your story, boys. You don't believe me? Well, suppose I told you that Bennett tried to stop my broadcast about the Admiral. Then the next day goes before a Senate committee and throws the book at the old man. Now, if that doesn't sound like a put-up job, then believe me, gentlemen, I have never heard one. Steve. You did send those telegrams, didn't you? You know me. Always double-crossing someone. Why did you do it? I decided to open my own office, and I wanted to bow out in a blaze of glory. Is that the only reason? That and my deep affection for the California condor. Why are you ashamed to admit you did something decent for a change? Look, Professor, don't get the idea that I've suddenly gone soft-headed. I just wanted to show you uh, amateurs what a professional can do. Hey, what's going on here, Steve? What are you trying to hide? What happened? It looks like I'm going to have to do a little lobbying of my own. Good morning. I want to know who's responsible for this. Hmm. Well, uh, it's undoubtedly our work. Yes, I know that. What I'm trying to find out is who ordered them and who sent them out. Uh, you'll have to take that up with our Mr. Adams. Oh, Admiral. Johnny. Steve. You got your old job back. Well, not quite. I've been kicked upstairs by popular demand. <laughs> what do you know about this? Oh, yes. I've just been congratulating Anne. Where is she? Right in there. Oh, hello, darling. You're just in time to help me address the rest of these envelopes. All right. What's the gag? 
It's no gag. I'm just taking a lesson from you. If you're out to get something, mobilize public opinion on your side. Build up outside pressure. What makes you think I want to marry you? Don't you? Well, I... Well, I've never even told you that I loved you. I, I've never even kissed you. That gives us so much more to do on our honeymoon. You're the darndest girl I've ever met. Oh, that sounds promising. Well, I... I've heard of women deliberately setting out to trap a man. But you take the cake. Well, I just wanted to show you professionals what an amateur can do.